Hi there, Zen Honeycutt here of Moms Across America. I'm here with Matt Powers, author and permaculture educator. And I'm really excited about this edition of our three-part series. Today, we're going to talk about permaculture in schools. Mm -hmm. Now, that normally looks like a school garden, mm -hmm. and, which is a great thing. And many of our supporters have probably helped to start a school garden. We know there's many great seed companies that have donated seeds for school gardens, like Baker Creek, one of our sponsors. We love them. And we, we know that it's exciting and fun to start, but then what happens, Matt? Well, usually the next year it gets abandoned. And so we end up with these abandoned gardens that become this eyesore and then no one wants to touch it. Uh, and the science teacher's like, well, I'm not a gardener and they don't have any curriculum. No curriculum. And so no one does anything with it because they don't know what to do with it because most of the time you plant just the regular old garden and when is it ready? When the kids are not there. Right, when the kids are not in school and the harvest time is happening and it's drying out. Mm -hmm. then, right? Yes. So if we did perennial gardens, if we did more permaculture-based systems, we would suddenly have earlier year-round yields. You would have an early spring garden. You would have a winter garden. Mm -hmm. You would have an orchard. You'd be able to have Orchards. the kids involved with more than just you plant a seed and it grows, right. and then it's a plant that you eat. There, you get involved with the cycle of the soil, the inner relationship between trees and overstory, understory, vine layer, all the different layers of the food forest. You know, it becomes this, this, this lesson in of itself. You go out there and you just explore and you're learning. But with a, with a garden and it's straight rows and it's a do, 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 you don't learn as much. It's really understandable, like instantaneously. Um, and it's all constant maintenance rather than using natural cycles and systems which reinforces the science, which reinforces their ability to do it on their own. Right, and, in, and engage more. Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing is, because I've had the, the privilege to be able to visit a food forest in Maui. Oh, wow. Which was amazing. So I want people to understand the difference between what you're talking about with a garden that's do, 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 right? Like that's just straight <laughs> in a row, food growing, right? With the, with the dirt that has been tilled and it's, um, you know, and you have to be very careful with the weeding and, mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. What, what you're talking about with permaculture, my understanding is, is that it can be more like a food forest. Like you've got trees and right below that you may have certain, um, certain flowers growing or which help the soil, like, like chrysanthemum, which helps keep bugs away, things like that. And then, then you may have some tomatoes over there or some corn with some squash growing below it and some beans, right? Like the Native Americans did, the three sisters. Mm -hmm. So you have a whole... Uh, very diverse environment where it's not just a very structured garden. Is that it, correct? It's ecosystemic. Okay, it's so essentially bushes it is. with berries right. and all kinds when of things. When you looked at my garden in the Central Valley, I mean, the soil is 120 degrees, even where it's irrigated. It's 140 degrees where it's not. And it looks like a jungle. And people look at it and they can't even see food because it's just this riot of color and you have to like walk in and engage with it and be like oh well you're a tomato and, and <laughs> yeah so it's a jungle it's, it's a, a jungle it's food a, yeah, yeah. It's a food forest it's a food jungle and that's a very different concept from what we are taught it's complex and it yes. shows what nature is complex and if you design it and then you watch it complex i mean what does that do to your understanding of the way nature works you know for, yeah. for young kids it makes you comfortable with complexity, which is the number one issue that we have currently with um, businesses, entrepreneurs, um, our greatest minds in the economy. I mean, we have this problem with complexity currently, and it's we need to embrace it. And yeah. people are trying to dumb down everything. Everybody's trying to make everything more simple mm -hmm. and not as much work and easy to do. And so we get uncomfortable when something looks like a big mess. But that mess is beautiful, diverse, it's rich, and it can, uh, it can, can, can contain much more food because oh, yeah. all of the different microbes are feeding off each other. And you it's know, stacking The physically. waste from a tree, right? You know, the fruit, or the fruit of the, can fall down and, you know, um, rot in the yep. soil, and then that will feed the plants that grow underneath it. And, and grow new plants. And, and new plants yeah. and all of that. So it's, it's just a whole different concept, and it's very exciting. And so I'd like to just point out some of the books that you have. Sure. Okay, you say a little bit about these. So this one is Magic Beans. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? So this is actually painted in only vegetable and fruit juices. 
So exciting. Yeah, it's really kind of wild. Um, this book was written so that we could give this to elementary schools because elementary school age kids and, and, and younger, they, they learn in a story format or they learn through experience. So we, they, we either tell them about something or we include them in it. And that's why I've got two books. I've got this story-based one, and this is just one of uh, a, a bunch of different ones we're going to be writing. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful. It's, it, and it really is designed to empower them. I mean, it's, it's painted in a simple fashion so that they feel like they can self-identify with it. Yes, that they could maybe paint like this too, right? Out with of, vegetable with juices. With vegetables. Yeah. How cool. Oh, a whole new form of playing with your food, right? <laughs> that's so great. Okay, and then tell us about this one. So this is kind of like the classic Richard Scarry where you have the identification. So you have the big picture and then you zoom in on each section. So I, I, we open it up, we define uh, what permaculture is. And for kids, you know, permaculture, all it is is, you know, seeing the world through nature's eyes and working with the world with nature's patterns. Mm -hmm. And so this defines what ethics are. And then, like I said, okay, so here's picture. the big picture. Yeah, so here's the big picture of a permaculture type garden and then you zoom in here right on the annuals and then there's right. annuals and perennials. and perennials okay and you explain the difference between all of those and this is good for about what grade this is like uh third to fifth grade this is really identification and comprehension level of the, the bloom taxonomy of cognition and so Basically, at this age, we're showing, we're identifying, and then they can read about it and then go into the garden and actually either build it, set it up, or, or witness it working and eat from it, you know? This is perfect because in fifth grade at Waldorf schools, my kids go to a, thank goodness, free charter public Waldorf school, and they have a school garden in fifth grade, and that's when they really start, like, tilling the compost and take they... Um, you know, take, they prune the trees. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's actually pretty amazing. They get kids with pruning shears out in the garden, cutting trees. I mean, they trust them to do that and the kids do a great job. Mm -hmm. You know, they teach them all about how to do it. So yeah, here's compost. So this is, this is the perfect age to have kids getting out in a school garden um, and taking care of not only uh, plants, but they could take care of animals as well. They could have chickens. I don't, I don't know what the rules are for that, which... Well, the rules will but, adapt. Yeah, they I, should change if they can't, if you can't have chickens on a school. And those fifth yeah. graders, those fifth graders are going to be the leaders demonstrating to all those younger kids that, you know, being, you know, the exemplars, you know, of how to do it. Mm -hmm. It's going to yeah. be really exciting because they're going to feel so much accomplishment because they're the ones that are actually going to do this. Yeah, and they're going to take this out into the world. They're going to tell their parents, this is what I want to do. Yeah, so this is the permaculture student, the workbook and the book. To so tell us about these, what grades are these? Okay, this is middle school. And this is, okay. have you guys heard of a PDC, a permaculture design course? Maybe no. Jeff Lawton permaculture mm -hmm. design course? Okay. Well, this is based off of Jeff Lawton's permaculture design course. And it has Bill Mollison's work in it. It's got some of Master with Fukuoka, Seth Holzer, uh, folks like that. But primarily, it's Jeff Lawton's form of the PDC. So it covers everything that you would learn in a PDC in a condensed format that's clear, and it's an eighth grade, uh, seventh grade reading level. So look this, at these illustrations. Look, just look how beautiful they are. So many, so many of the graphics that I see in modern day textbooks now are just solid color, like as simple as they, like just terrible. You know, they're just saving not, money. they're not, yeah, they're saving, they're not interesting at all, but you have, these have actual illustrations from artists in here. This is, this is really great. Felt really good actually to be able to pay artists, you know, yeah, that's, a, that's, you did, yeah. you paid artists for this. <laughs> Fabulous, supporting art as well, supporting artists, that's fantastic. So, so it explains the water systems and everything. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this explains the patterns of nature, the behaviors of nature, and then explains how we can start participating in it, and then it gives examples of house uh, systems, of greenhouse systems, of water um, uh, infiltration systems, microclimates. Um, all these different things. And this book actually is being translated right now into Russian and Swahili, Turkish. So exciting! Yeah, it's oh, actually- Oh, that's so great! It's in Arabic in the most, it's, it, there's 3,000 copies of it in Arabic, so that makes it the most copies in Arabic. Um, there's Polish, there's Spanish already out, and French and Italian are almost done. So this book is on every continent but Antarctica. 
It's being used in orphanages, in schools. The International School of Los Angeles is currently using it. Yay! That and is awesome. California's El Diablo School District is using it. These books are, are being used because people want to get this, you know, eco certification. They want to make their gardens um, grow and be a thriving place of actual learning. This is so great. Here's your compost schedule, your schedule so that you don't start a fire <laughs> in your school garden. So Absolutely. great. Yeah, excellent. So this can be, this is again, you said middle school, right? Yeah. Okay. So middle school, if you're- and People are using it in high school. People are using it. Okay, middle school or high school. If your children are in middle school or high school, you need to get a hold of this set of books and donate it to your uh, school director or mm -hmm. not just the school library because you want the school to consider to have it within their curriculum to start using it and teaching it in all of their classes. Um, because again, this is not just about gardening. It's about an entire lifestyle. It's mm -hmm. about relating with the planet, with earth, with nature, with water. Um, not polluting and not destroying and uh, not using up our resources, actually working with it. So this is an, and this is a workbook that accompanies it. Is that it? Yes. This walks you through your site and actually like takes you through all the different, you know, it organizes you. So you write down your plants. Love and it. Go through. Love to be organized. Yeah. Yeah. We need this. Yes. Um, so this is the guy that takes you step by step. And this is a perfect summer or uh, spring unit. So they get out in the garden, they start planting their home gardens with this. Wow. They're learning with the school site. Maybe they have seeds or cuttings from the school site that they're rooting and then they get to take home or something and then put in their garden. Right. So they're, you're, you're, they're learning chemistry here as well, right? They're learning chemistry. They're learning planning and timing. They're doing art. They're, cre they're drawing. So, and I saw another um, page back there before that had math in it, mm -hmm. you know, and physics. They, they were, you were um, There's a tan measuring in the there slope, too. measuring yeah. the slope. So you've got physics. You, you can learn pretty much everything you need to know through gardening, you know, math, English, right? It's science, history, right? I've All gotten feedback of, that for a lot of people, permaculture is the way that their kids fall in love with science again they're, they're, it's the way that science becomes real because they actually can go wait it's not just this thing on a piece of paper that i've got to just find the answer for and it's really in the back of the book and i'm not supposed to look at the back of the book it's something that's real to me that you know when i started learning permaculture i was convinced that i wasn't good at science and when i started learning permaculture I started being like, wait, okay, so now I understand things on, on like this, like connecting to a chemical level and then to a molecular level. And connecting all those things from a visual to a molecular level and to the elements that it actually is made up of was really revolutionary for me. It made me realize that I was convinced at a very young age that I wouldn't be good at science. And so I gave up and I let them have the prize. I let yeah. them have that. Well, I, I gave up in science because I thought I wasn't good at math. Hmm. And the math teacher I had wasn't particularly friendly and happy. So um, I'm, when I struggled with it, I didn't get that much support. And I really wanted to be a scientist. I loved science. I was fascinated with now. nature. Now I feel like I'm using you know, math and I, my dad wanted me to be a lawyer. My mom thought I should be a writer. So now I think I'm doing science law and writing all in one. And um, it's really fun. But, but don't give up on yourself. If you think that you're not a gardener or not a scientist, um, it's not just about that. It's all encompassing. It's for mm -hmm. an entire lifestyle. And you teach then in college, right? You're, you're yes, high school and college. college. So like 11th, 12th grade. Uh, I wrote it with, with a reading level of ninth grade. Okay. But I have been told that graduate level student, and I know this too, but I've been told that graduate student uh, level students in agriculture departments need to read it. Uh, I've graduate actually, level. Yeah. yeah, I've had grad students come to Baker Creek um, and I've taught them. Uh, and, and help them, <laughs> which is pretty wild because I don't have a master's degree in agriculture. Yeah, but you do in this. I mean, just just by <laughs> just by way of doing. I mean, you've you've given yourself an extensive education, and you're an expert in this now. So uh, it was one on one too, which was really incredible. I got with especially with this book. This book right here was about um, there's about ten experts. This one had over twenty different experts. This one that were working twenty different experts. Okay, one on one with me for over a year. So we had the USDA soil primer author, Dr. Elaine Ingham, 
working with me extensively for over a year. Yeah. Stuff Very like that. extensive. These cycles, right? And the, and what's going on in the soil? There's pictures of the soil microbes here. There's the whole um, soil food web. I mean, this gets down into the nitty gritty, and the kids are really going to be fascinated with this. And it's a co it's a career pathway. So, I was broken hearted in a lot of ways by what happened to all my high school kids year after year. I watched them leave me, and I was a, a sophomore. So like that culmination, we like charge them up so they get through high school, right? And then I see them like go like, I don't know where to go now as they approach the end. Mm -hmm. And it just broke my heart because I was like, oh, I don't have answers for you. Yeah. And you know what? This book is finally where I get to bring all my students the answers. All Yay! my students from all those years, I get to be like, okay, I have dozens upon dozens upon dozens of jobs now yep. that are not only gonna make you money, they're gonna make your community like more money, they're going to make your environment healthier, they're gonna make you healthier. We're in a county where, well, I was teaching in a county where you know the fires were perennial we would have the fires return every year. At least one kid a year would lose their home. Mm -hmm. One of the most violent counties in America. People are dying monthly on the road that all the kids take to get to school. Highway 41, if you've never heard of it, it's, um, it's crazy. People die on it every month that I know. It's terrible. Um, so it's, a, it's this, this awful situation where it feels like they don't have any choices. They go to the military or they go to debt and they get out and they never come back. And I feel like there's so many towns in America like this. But I have the way that they can flip it. They can turn it around. And this entire, I was, the entire time I was a teacher, it burned in me. Mm -hmm. It's like I couldn't help them. Right. And I did everything I could to help them. So what happened? You, you, you found some answers. and now I found some answers and, and I you, turned it into this because I was like, it didn't exist for my kids. So I'm going to make it for my, my own kids, my boys. And for all my other kids. So, so this can help them make money too? Yeah. Maybe this can give them yeah, jobs? Yeah, this can totally give them jobs. Oh, I have a 14 year old that needs that. <laughs> and and so it was just, this, it, was, it was the way that, you know, I felt obligated. I saw all these kids who were with, with no options, no way out, no hope for a future. They're not gonna get into that top, you know, top 40 school. Or, and they don't, maybe they don't want to. Yeah, maybe yeah, they yeah. They, they don't want to be, they want to be free out of that nature, debt. And they don't, their ideal is not sitting at a jobby job desk, you know? Yeah, inside. those jobby job desks are dead in the water. Yeah, they just, you've got to have imagination. You've mm -hmm. got to be a problem solver. You need to be able to interact with your environment and get involved. In, and it sounds like this can do it. Now, what, just give us a tease of what type of jobs could teenagers have? if they okay. study this. So, so let's just go straight to the skills. So for instance, do you know, have you guys ever made compost? I've tried. That's what most people say. They yeah. say, yeah, <laughs> I tried, tried that. <laughs> Guess what? We didn't practice if you this, get so. good at it, uh -huh. everyone's going to want to buy it from you. Oh, um, yeah, you so, could sell poop. Well, what you could do is you literally could cap, you could do the landscaping, right? Yeah. You could do all the trimming or, or make a deal with all those guys that do all the trimming. Right. You okay. gather all the yard waste. Then yeah. you compost it. You mix it maybe with horse manure from a local uh, stable. Okay. There are horse stables around uh -huh. here. Yes. And, and then you get it up to heat so that it burns all the weed seeds out of that horse manure. Okay. And then you get this amazing material and you're giving it back to where it came from. So it's actually the organic matter, right? The, yeah. the carbon from that site. You're giving it back to them and it's a service they want. And the directions are here on how to do it. And then you can make it into compost tea, which is value adding that compost. So you take a small bit of that and turn it into 55 gallons of compost tea that you can charge for. Wow, right? Wow, so we're yeah. scaling up here. And then um, you could do you know, worm compost. Um, you could do vermicompost, which is static and much easier. And then you could sell the worms and help people. You maybe can even yeah. build people's setups for them. And there's no law against a teenager selling worm compost. So they can do that. They may not be able to go get a job in a hardware store at this age, right? They right. Can't they can't be paid on the table, but they could do something like this. Right. right. And then the way we do this is we, we, we root things. And right here, if we go right here, this is, um, how to, you know, right here, we're down here at the bottom. This is how to uh, root cuttings. So you take a fig cutting from off your tree that you were trimming, Turn that into another fig tree. 
It's mm. so easy. So you could have your teenage son go outside, trim that big tree, and then turn it into 200 trees, and then sell them wow. for $5 each. Wow. And I make $1,000. I love it. Totally love it. And that that car they want in the future someday, or maybe not a car, maybe a bike. Well, that's Actually, seasonal, right? Actually, my son said, Mom, I'm not going to get a car. I'm going to get a bike. Yeah. <laughs> awesome right or you know they want to go to a particular outdoor adventure camp or mm -hmm. something that they want to save up for um the, if they've earned the money for it themselves they are going to appreciate it so much more they're going to be so much more proud of themselves um they're really going to have pride they're going to understand the value of a dollar and value right because most people have no concept of actual value and what it takes to get that value yeah <laughs> Yeah, they don't. They just expect it to be given to them, especially even you know, adults. Even adults. Yeah, you know, just expect it to be given. So I want to also add out of, out of this book. When you came to visit me, we looked up on our hillside. I was so embarrassed that one part of the hillside was all brown and dead because our gardener, I don't know why, thought it would be better to spray the grass there, the weeds right, with um, a weed killer. Now, thank goodness we had already agreed he would be using it, natural weed killers mm -hmm. if he used them anywhere. I said, you know, I really prefer you don't use them. He said, but if I use them, it'll be, you know, natural citrus-based. I, I believe the one he's using now is called Avenger um, because he said that a lot of his clients do not want Roundup anymore. Yay. Mm. So he has found a different resource. But anyway, he sprayed. Wonder where they got that idea. Yeah. Gee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so could it be the flyers? Or else? Yeah. Anyway, so we... We, he sprayed and one whole part of my hillside was brown. And I'm like, how could he think that looks better? How could that be better gardening or landscaping? I don't understand when a hillside looks brown. I prefer green and I don't care if it's weeds or grass or, or bushes or whatever. I don't care. I prefer green, right? Um, so we're going to have a talk about that. But when I showed Matt that hillside, he said, hang on a second. This is your chart. Here's where weeds are, right? They're up here where it's a, it's what? Alkaline. Where it's alkaline, right? And so your weeds won't grow if the soil is balanced. Mm -hmm. Holy mackerel. So all we need to do is balance the soil, folks. We need our put landscapers. something else in there, yeah. We need yeah. our landscapers to learn about that if we don't want weeds. Now, I personally don't care if we have weeds or not. I mean, I, yeah. I just think it's all beautiful. But um, this, this is what the, most landscapers are not doing. And um, if the teenagers and the college students start learning these kinds of things, they will look at soil management and landscaping mm -hmm. and gardening and living in a whole different way because life is about balancing things out, right? Yeah, There's yeah. Some... Well, we've all seen that garden that grew that didn't have any fruit or that giant plant that grew and you're like, wow, that's a giant corn. Well, it formed no ears this year. I don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's because it's all nitrate. It's all alkaline. And then they're always weeding the whole summer. They're like, I pulled well, weeds out the whole summer. And where they go is to, is I can't garden. I can't grow food. And people give up. Don't give up. Yeah, well, it's just in the soil. You just got to fix yeah, the soil. Yeah, just take, you know, so how do you do, do you test the soil? Do you take some of it to well, the crazy a thing, nursery it, and have them tested? You show can, them? Yeah? you can. Okay. Uh, the crazy thing about compost is it's a buffer. It's not a directive, it's a buffer. So if you're too acidic and you add compost, it moves it towards stem. Too alkaline, you, mean it you makes it more, compost. So you mean it makes it more acidic if it's already acidic? It pushes it towards neutrality, towards oh, okay. seven. So it can balance it out. So compost yeah, is Yeah, compost good, good is okay. like the, the panacea. Okay. So you put it on there and compost tea, uh, you can water it in. So you can't go wrong with compost, no, matter, what, no matter how your soil or is, if it's alkaline or acidic. Yeah, and if it, it has to be good compost. Okay, we're talking good compost. About. Good okay. compost, because okay. um, some city composts, you know, and so weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we want to make sure as much as we can that we're using compost um, that is not from cows fed GMO food mm -hmm. and grains, you know, sprayed. Sick. They're sick, and the grains that they're eating are sprayed with glyphosate, very high levels, like 400 parts per million are allowed on grains and alfalfa and all that animal feed. And it only takes 0.1 parts per billion to destroy your gut bacteria, your mm -hmm. beneficial gut bacteria. And then that allows for the proliferation of pathogenic gut bacteria and things like fungus, which can actually change brain patterns, um, cause inflammation in the brain and change behavior and learning abilities. So if you have a child with learning abilities that's erratic, um, you know, suddenly hitting or not paying attention, please take them to the doctor and get their urine test for fungus and bad bacteria. 
If you can find out what's going on in their gut, you can change everything. Just like with the soil, like he was just talking about, if the soil is um, you know, too acidic or too alkaline or whichever, you can balance that out. And you need to with the microbes in the soil. And we do it with our kids, don't we? We inoculate yeah. our kids with good uh, microbes, right? Sauerkraut. Right, exactly. Just give them a couple. And, and you might have to use gold stars for a little while. I had to do that for about two or three weeks, especially with my seven-year-old at the time. We had to use gold stars. But after a couple of weeks, I mean, they've, they know now. Yeah, They're getting a trillion good bacteria in that sauerkraut. I say open up, ah, give them a whole um, fork full of sauerkraut that balances out their gut bacteria. And we have far less uh, rashes, mm. uh, far fewer erratic behavior episodes. They're just getting what they need in their gut, just like the soil with the compost. Right. That's exactly right. So, and both are life rich. Very rich and, and, and great. And, and the, the microbes in, sorry, the bacteria in the, um, the sauerkraut can actually break down pesticides. So if you can't get organic sauerkraut and you can only find regular sauerkraut, yeah, there's certain bacteria that actually eat the pesticides. So it's fabulous. So just get some sauerkraut and not, but not, don't do the vinegar kind, do the actual fermented, you know, sauerkraut. Old so fashioned the, kind. Yeah. So the jar in the glass jar sauerkraut, usually it's in the refrigerator section, but there are some that are in the regular on the shelf. Um, I think the one in the refrigerator section is going to be more rich with bacteria. So they don't um, have the yeah. Yeah. But don't get the like pickles in vinegar. That's not, fermented yeah so um or it's not doesn't have the good stuff like it needs to but anyway this book is um really amazing and i would like to encourage everybody we'll, we, when we post this video underneath the comments we'll have links to your website and where they can buy them he's got a limited edition right now right it's yes and so, I, there won't be any, there won't be any real gaps i can set it up so it's print on demand but we have a limited run of uh, of the first 500 that we've printed they're all signed uh, a special purple pen to match the cover <laughs> um, <laughs> we had so much fun making this. I can tell. Look at this. It's amazing. So he's, again, 20 different experts. Your school can feel extremely confident that they're getting a, a curriculum that has it will been revolutionize their the science department. I showed this to um, my boarding school, which is a top 40 boarding school, holderness school. Mm -hmm. And their reaction was, we need to show this to everyone in the science department. So Woo, that's awesome. Oh, <laughs> same my. thing with international schools. The gears should be turning, folks. You should be thinking of all the schools that you've ever gone to, anybody that you ever know that's a teacher, any principals, um, just everybody that you know that's involved in education, because this is the answer. So the other thing we have to touch on is that the GMO companies have infiltrated our schools and they are teaching our children that GMOs are great. I'm not kidding. It's and they work it into like English where you have to have a new vocabulary word, right? It's not even in the science section. It's in the English section. It's in um, math equations. They're, in, they're all over the place. So you have to look at what are your kids learning in school in the science department, especially in middle school and high school. What are they indoctrinating them with? These, the chemical companies have basically bought their way into these universities. They buy chairs at uh, colleges as well. They make uh, college professors tenured. And then those college professors will actually, um, you know, convince their students that GMOs are a great thing. Here he addresses it. You want to say a little bit about this page? Yeah. So GMOs. what we have here is GMOs and epigenetics. So epigenetics is how we actually um, encode our DNA. It's epigenetics is our reaction to our environment, really. So for instance, if I start smoking cigarettes, I'm gonna flip the epigenetic switches on the sides of my genes. It doesn't affect the actual coding of my genes. It switches a side switch on my genes and it affects the phenotypic expression of my genes. And on that switch could be cancer, mm -hmm. could be emphysema, could be all these different things caused by my smoking like repeatedly or whatever. Epigenetic switches are the actual way that we, 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 we express our phenotypic uh, and, and we actually pass on these, these switches and these predilections. Right. So alcoholism makes it so that up to three or four generations are prone to be alcoholics. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with everything we do yeah. with our genes. Mm -hmm. And so GMOs totally don't even, I mean, they were created way before they were made, they were made legal way before this discovery was made in 2006 and published in Discover Magazine that DNA is not destiny is the article. It's really incredible. You should all read it. Um, 
But basically, they proved that this whole mechanical thinking that we have, you take one gene out of here, you pop it in there, and it's all good. Yeah, oh, it's just like Legos. No, it's not. It's not at all, actually. There's these, every bundle is a bundle of a spectrum of phenotypic expressions. So one little sequence in a bee, for instance, switches from a worker bee to a honeybee. So the dance they do, the location, you know, mm -hmm. finding things, you know, getting the pollen, how to move the pollen into those little, like, like how they like rub it and then yeah. make it in that it little changes, packet. It changes everything in their body. Everything! Because one little thing. It's, it's like a pond that has all kinds of, it's holistic. Like you put a drop of it and it, it will affect the fish at the under of the pond. It'll affect the- Syntax. Everything, yeah. So There's a holistic. syntax. Yeah. And so in other words, in the sequence of genes, where it's placed, makes and where other things are placed in relationship it's like latin like we figured out like you know after a while that latin where they actually do place it does make a difference there's an inflection there right so we are at a point where our science has not caught up to our industry and it's been blocked purposely so that we actually don't have the information so what we need to do Mm -hmm. It's just give them the fundamental understanding of what epigenetics are. And then suddenly GMOs looks totally ludicrous. Right. Yeah. And a lot of other things look ludicrous. Yeah. Like, you know, vaccines because they don't actually pass on to our children. Like yeah. my immunity to polio. Oh, should and be passed on to my children. Why isn't it? Yeah. Why aren't it's we talking not. about this? Yeah. So and spraying, and spraying chemicals, poison on our foods looks completely ridiculous. Things right, like that. Right. Right. So, so Instead of actually making healthy food that's so healthy that it, it's resistant to that. And then it's, we gain that resistance and so that we're strong and resistant. Yes. It's all we connected. have more, you know, more vitamin D is more effective than a flu shot. So get out in the sun, you know, eat foods that are rich in vitamin, just, you know, learn about food and how you can take care of yourself from food. You can grow a lot of herbs in your backyard garden um, or in your school garden. And one, I want to, we need to close. So I, I do want <laughs> to, I do want to add, I want to add something though that when I visited a uh, the Pilgrim Village in um, Plymouth Rock, mm. okay, and there are actors there and they they act out their role. And so we went into one of the little um, you know dirt floor homes and there was a uh, captain there and his wife was cooking at the hearth and there were herbs hanging over the um, the hearth. And I said, oh, is that just making conversation? And you know they talk in their accents and everything. I said, is that um, chamomile. And he said, Hey, that there be fever few. You have a servant to take care of your family. Do you? And I was like, uh, no, I don't have a servant. He's like, well, then how do you take care of your family? And I'm like, well, I don't know. You mean like when they get sick? And he said, yeah, yeah. You know, yes, For basically. Yeah, have and, and I said, well, I guess I take them to the doctor now and then, but they don't get sick that often. And he said, oh, charlatans and hooligans, a lot of them doctors. Ah, and he went off on them. Right. And he said, we, the, the missus grows the herbs in the backyard. It's better to know yourself. And I was like, it is right, you know, it is better to know yourself how to take yeah. care of your family. And I said, well, then, but what do you do for surgery? And he said, oh, the butcher's son does a fine chop. <laughs> so that's like, regional surgeons were butchers. That's yes. So I, I just, I just want to impress upon people that it is better to know yourself, your, yourself, yourself. It's better to know yourself to learn how to grow herbs and and um, food and to know what's going on in the soil. And we need to, I don't even want to say get back to that. We need to go forward. Yeah, that's the key. We need to go science forward to go. with this. We need to go forward with this. We have a world of rich and diverse knowledge um, from experts. We need you to bring this to your schools, bring this to your school principal, to your science teachers, whichever, please get this out. And if, if you know somebody who's wealthy, who likes science, ask them to donate $5,000 to buy a bunch of these, right? Why not? Just Please. ask them. If you don't <laughs> ask, it's not going to happen. So go ask a wealthy person that you know to get these, this curriculum into some local schools, okay? Please go to momsacrossamerica.org. We will post links to Matt's site. Um, he answers questions. He does Q&A on Facebook. Please mm -hmm. follow with yep. your Facebook page. Uh, the permaculture student. The permaculture student. He's doing stuff on Facebook all the time. So if you have questions, you can ask him directly about your garden and, and school and all that kind of stuff, right? You got it. So fabulous. Thank you, everybody, for watching. MomsAcrossAmerica.org. Thank you, Matt. Oh, thank you. Okay.